Hi, my name is Sue Garrett. I'm going to be reading a selection from a writing by Maria W. Stewart. Maria Stewart was a 19th century abolitionist, teacher, and public speaker. And this is from an essay she published in 1831 in the newspaper The Liberator, published by William Lloyd Garrison. The article is entitled Religion and the Pure Principles of Morality, the Sure Foundation on Which We Must Build. And in this piece, she emulates the tradition so well established by her friend and predecessor, David Walker, who, among other things, boldly condemned America for its sins against people of color. In this piece, she speaks about the judgment of God that is coming, but then midway turns to address her brothers and sisters of color. O ye great and mighty men of America, ye rich and powerful ones, many of you will call for the rocks and the mountains to fall upon you and to hide you from the wrath of the Lamb and from him that sitteth upon the throne, while many of the sable-skinned Africans that you despise will shine in the kingdom of heaven as the stars forever and ever. Charity begins at home, and those that do not provide for their own are worse than infidels. We know that you are raising contributions for the gallant people of Poland, we know that you have befriended Greece and Ireland, and you have rejoiced with France for her, her, her heroic deeds of valor. You have, have acknowledged all of the nations of the earth except Haiti. And you may publish as far as the East is from the West that you have two millions of Negroes who aspire no higher than to bow at your feet and to court your smiles. You may kill, tyrannize, and oppress as much as you choose until our cry shall come before the throne of God. For I am firmly persuaded that he will not suffer you to quell the proud, fearless, and undaunted spirits of the Africans forever. For in his own time he is able to plead our cause against you and to pour out upon you the ten plagues of Egypt. We will not come out against you as with swords and staves as against a thief, but we will tell you that our souls are fired with the same love of liberty and independence with which your souls are fired. We will tell you that too much of your blood flows in our veins, too much of your color is in our skins for us not to possess your spirits also. We will tell you that it is our gold that clothes you with linen and fine purple, and it causes you to fare sumptuously every day. And it is the blood of our fathers and tears of our brethren that have enriched your soil, and we claim our rights. We will tell you that we are not afraid of them that kill the body and after that can do no more. But we will tell you whom we do fear. We fear him who is able, after he hath killed, to destroy soul and body in hell forever. Then, my brothers and sisters, sheath your swords and calm your angry, angry passions. Stand still and know that the Lord is God. Vengeance is his, and he will repay. It is a long lane that has no turn. America has risen to her meridian, when you begin to thrive, she will begin to fall. God hath raised you up a walker and a garrison. Though walker sleeps, yet he lives, and his name shall be had in everlasting remembrance. I, even I, who am but a child and experienced to many of you, am living as a witness to testify to you this day that I have seen the wicked in great power, and lo, he passed away. Yea, I diligently sought him, but he could not be found. And it is God alone who has inspired my heart to feel for Africans' woes. Then fret not yourselves because of evildoers. Fret not yourselves because of the men who bring wicked devices to pass, for they shall be cut down as the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. And so thou shalt dwell in the land and verily shalt thou be fed. Encourage the noble-hearted garrison. I am sensible, my brethren and friends, that many of you have been deprived of advantages, kept in utter ignorance, and that your minds are now darkened. And if any one of you have attempted to, to aspire after high and noble enterprises, you have met with so much opposition that your souls have become discouraged. For this very cause, a few of us have ventured to expose our lives in your behalf, to plead your cause against the great. And it will be of no use unless you feel for yourselves and then your little ones in exhibit the spirits of men. Oh, then turn your attention to knowledge and improvement, for knowledge is power. 
and God is able to fill you with wisdom and understanding and to dispel your fears. Arm yourselves with the weapons of power, with the weapons of prayer. Put your trust in the living God. Persevere strictly in the paths of virtue. Let nothing be lacking on your part. And in God's own time, and his time is certainly the best, he will surely deliver you with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm.